Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. Uh, we appreciate your time. I, I know it's late in the day uh, across the pond, so uh, those of you that are uh, dialing in uh, from Europe, uh, thank you very, very much for your time this evening. Uh, my name is Hendrik Spaden. Just a couple of uh, quick uh, webinar session reminders. Everybody is in listen-only mode and automatically muted. However, we do want to make this as interactive as possible. So there is a question function in your GoToWebinar client. Please feel free to type in those questions, uh, and then we will answer those towards the towards the end of the session. Uh, and uh, well, I would like to introduce uh, turn it over to you if that's okay. Yes, Hendrix, uh, thank you, and thanks uh, CY2 for inviting uh, us uh, uh, to this uh, great conference. Um, uh, let's uh, start with uh, uh, the session uh, Data Privacy in People Tools Query with the new Query Data Masking Tool. And I'm going to start to introduce myself and my company. Uh, we are Epicenter. We are an Oracle a consulting firm with more than 30 uh, employees. We specialize in PeopleSoft and Oracle Cloud. Uh, originally, we, we were founded in the Netherlands, but now we are multinational with employees uh, in several countries all over the globe. And um, our main product at the moment is Fit for Cloud, uh, which is uh, managed integration services. Uh, into and from Oracle Cloud. You can find more info about that on our website. Um, I am Roel Griffioen. I am a managing consultant for uh, Campus Solutions and I have uh, 22 years of experience in that area. And we are an Oracle Gold Partner. So uh, right on to the agenda. Uh, it, I'll start uh, uh, covering a short uh, uh, summary of the basics of the data privacy framework, which is actually uh, uh, the basis for uh, on which query data masking has been developed, designed and built by Oracle. Um, the next se section of this session will be about uh, the query data masking itself. How does it work? What is it meant for? Uh, then I'm going into the query data masking setup and uh, after that I'll talk about authorization. How can you manage that some people uh, have the authorization to see data unmasked, the full data and other uh, users don't have that uh, authorization so they should see the data masked. Uh, the last section will be on how to exclude fields from the whole query data masking process. And at the end, there's room for questions and answers. So let's start with uh, the first section about uh, uh, the data privacy framework that has been around for about two or three years now. Um, what is it about? You can mark uh, uh, record fields as personal identifier, which I will abbreviate in this session to uh, PI and uh, and or sensitive. So you, you must think uh, a personal identifier is uh, a data you can use to uh, identify about which person this piece of data uh, is about. Uh, so, like a social security number, you can identify a person uh, in question. Uh, sensitive is more like uh, a data you wouldn't want to give to someone you don't know in a bar, like your phone number or uh, maybe your birth date or uh, whatever. So, um, this is the page where you can actually uh, um, check the boxes personal identifier or sensitive and you can say well these fields and actually the record fields are uh, personal identifiers or they are sensitive. 
Now, the key points of this framework is that the configurations is being done per record field and not per field. And that makes sense because the sensitivity of a field can depend on the record context. In one record, it can be sensitive. In another record, it can be completely public information. So, um, uh, we... Uh, have a configuration per record field and a record can be a table but in a view uh, you can uh, have a different sensitivity uh, than in uh, some other tables so all those tables and all those views uh, and all the combinations with the fields can be configured differently that is very flexible but it can also mean much work however Oracle delivers a configuration of about five or six or seven thousand rows with record fields for records that usually have uh, personal identifiers or sensitive fields. And they already included some checkboxes for sensitive and PI, and you can modify it. So you have a head start when you're uh, about to start with your configuration for your privacy requirements. Uh, all of those records fields you can, ident uh, you can mark as either a personal identifier or sensitive or both or none. And that can also be useful. You'll see that later in this session. Okay, and when you have configured all those record fields as either a personal identifier or sensitive or both or none, then you have app engines in the data privacy framework that can create an overview of your references of your record field. So where in the application uh, do my fields go, my sensitive fields? Where, uh, what is the impact of the sensitivity of the record fields? Uh, you start those processes by a push on the button and that's on the configuration page of the data privacy framework, so no extra run control page uh, uh, you need to find it's just on that page and then after a while after those processes have finished um, uh, in the end six types of references will be shown and this is uh, one example uh, for references that have been found in queries and uh, in, in all of your queries where are the personal identifiable and sensitive fields so in this case, you see here the query, a list of queries, and then you can see the record fields that are used in, inside of those queries. And then you can see if they are either personal identifier or sensitive or both or none. Um, another uh, reference type is the component page. It's a little bit different because it is not read only. So it's not just view references, but actually it is maintain your references on the component page. The reason is if you define your record field as personal identifier and sensitive, it might be that on some pages it's not that sensitive. So you can make a difference between uh, uh, the same record field on page A and uh, the same record field on page B. And then you can uh, 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 change the checkboxes for PI and sensitive here on this page. Uh, this is also delivered configuration, uh, but it, of course it is modifiable. You can choose uh, the settings any way you want it. Okay, so that was the, the introduction uh, on the uh, data privacy framework, which you need to make use of query data masking. Uh, now, how does the query data masking work? Uh, first, we go into this functionally, but uh, after a while, I'll also go into a little bit of technical detail, not too much. Um, how does it functionally work? Well, record fields that have been marked in that data privacy framework, SPI or sensitive or both, doesn't matter. Uh, they will all be masked in query output for all of your queries. So it's not a configuration per query. It's just uh, 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 you configure the source, the record field, 
And in all of those queries, you will see the fields being masked. Uh, not only all of the queries uh, will be uh, will have masked uh, outputs, the connected queries also that are based on your queries, and also the BI publisher reports that are based on your uh, standard or connected or composite queries. You can um, authorize users to be able to see those fields unmasked, and then you need roles for that. You cannot do it user by user, uh, but you can do it role by role. Here below is an example. Uh, these fields address one, two, three, and four are masked. Here is an unmasked field, the county, and you can see that one. Now, um, uh, how does it, uh, how do you turn it on? Because uh, uh, when you get the functionality uh, in the beginning, all queries are being shown unmasked for all fields. Well, there is a master switch. Uh, uh, without that one, all, uh, without that, that one turned on, all data is shown to all users unmasked. If you set the switch, then the query tool will actually look at all those all of those record fields and it will uh, it will uh, look uh, hey how is it being used is it being used in the criteria or is it being used in sorting in ordering by uh, or both then your complete uh, uh, query will not uh, give any output. You will get an error message. You have insufficient access to retrieve this data. So if there's only one field uh, that is sensitive and being used in the criteria or order by, you don't see anything. And that's good to get it inside of your head because sometimes you will wonder, why am I not seeing anything? Oh, I did order by on that field. If you use it as a column only, as a field output only, then your output will be masked. Now, this is the actual uh, master switch page. page. It couldn't be easier than this. It's just a switch here, enable query masking, and it will have a save button, and you can see who uh, last updated this system setting. Uh, now, I need to go a bit into the technical details. How does uh, the query engine, the query tool uh, from PeopleSoft notice uh, uh, it needs to mask output? Well, um, all uh, record fields are being defined actually in a people tools table, which is called PS rec field. That PS rec field has several uh, that's a table that has several fields. Uh, it already had use edit. It now has a use edit two fields. You can see that in the upper right corner of the screen, use edit two. And that one may have a non-zero value and uh, that non-zero value in this case means uh, mask that field. Um, and you know, um, those uh, values in the PS rec field are usually only changeable in the app designer. So you're customizing the record if you change those values. But in this case, we do the sort of customizing, not in the app designer, but by configuration in the pure internet architecture. So uh, that is nice, but uh, it also raises a problem. Uh, what is that issue? Uh, not all record fields do have an entry in this PS rec fields table. Um, it is keyed by rec name and field name. So I'm showing you here uh, several records in the PS rec field that have the field name county. But the addresses record, that's the main record for all person addresses in uh, PeopleSoft Camp Solutions and other applications. Uh, it does have a county field, but it's not appearing here in the list. And that's an issue because how does the query tool then know 
what it needs to do with counting. Well, um, the reason is this. Some fields are connected to the record by the use of a sub-record. A sub-record is a set of fields uh, that can be reused in several records. So tables sharing the same set of fields. All those record field properties from fields within that sub-record are the same across all of the records that are using that sub-record. So uh, actually in the PSREC field, we can see that address SBR, and that's the sub-record that's being used in that addresses table. So maybe uh, uh, here the definition from the uh, Application designer, it's the last technical slide, bear with me. Uh, to the upper left is the addresses record. You can see se several fields, but you also see here the address sub record. Uh, to the upper right is the org location, that's another record, uh, which also has the address sub record. And then you, uh, below you can see the definition of that address sub record. So the county is in that sub record. And um, well, it, it behaves the same within the addresses record and within the org location record. Now, that can be a problem because addresses are usually private information uh, because they belong to persons, whereas the org location addresses may be from companies or uh, uh, other uh, organizations, uh, external organizations, which might be public info. So how we're going to deal with that. Um, so these org location county and addresses county, they will behave the same in query data masking. And uh, if we take another record, this is the AV relate B view. Uh, it doesn't have the sub record. It just have, has the same fields as the addresses sub record. So you can uh, it can behave differently in query data masking because it's not connected to that sub record. So we all see all of those three records here in the data privacy framework. So we can configure them all three differently, but uh, the addresses at the org location will, as a result, behave the same. So now we need to uh, go into our query data masking setup. Um, and we once again return to the data privacy framework itself and we want to uh, mark the addresses county as personal ident identifier and sensitive and the other two records we are talking about we want to leave those boxes empty so they are not sensitive we set the two checkboxes and click save on this page now uh, uh, you need to watch out for the green banner on top of the page because uh, currently if you uh, uh, save the page and then make another change and save the page again it will not be saved and you won't see the green banner so you need to, to reload the page then before you do your subsequent save that's uh, a small bug in the application and in the notes of this powerpoint i have the bug id To run a full sync, you can see the refresh type here is full, and if you can uh, schedule it or, or run it now, and then you can click the run button and it will start. And after the process has completed, you can check your query output to see is my field masked or not. Um, we look at a query with the addresses record and the county should be masked now because we set those checkboxes to be insensitive but it is still unmasked how come okay uh, we need to fix this by running a reset sync that is what oracle is actually uh, um, saying that you need to do you need to uh, run a reset sync first uh, which is basically remove all masking from all fields. So if you then run your query, you can see all columns unmasked. 
and then run the full sync again and after the process is completed you can check the query output again and then indeed the county is now masked however that is not always the case you need to be lucky uh, if you're not lucky then uh, oracle advises to reboot the app server and clear the cache that sounds heavy but it's a, a matter of five or ten minutes if you know what to do and if you have the authorization to do it otherwise you need a technical person to do that for you uh, but indeed after a reboot of the app server and clearing the cache it works uh, as designed and uh, you can see it uh, masked so uh, to compare you can see the unmasked county in the uh, query on the record that was not related to the sub records the org location query has the county also masked that means that the addresses records actually won the battle org location said well it's not sensitive addresses says it's sensitive but they have the same sub record and then the uh, uh, sensitive uh, wins and that's of course the right way to do it if you have a conflicting uh, thing here um, how about if you want to uh, have to keep the port location county uh, public so unmasked there is a workaround i'll return to that later and that is done by the authorization of roles. But first I must explain to you how authorization works. That's the next part of my presentation. So let's start here with the org location query. We have address one and address two fields that are marked. And how can we now authorize specific users or roles to be able to view them unmasked? Now we need to choose a role for which you will authorize the users to see those fields unmasked. You can insert the record fields uh, with access code authorized and you can uh, with the plus sign you can enter multiple record fields here record fields here and I also included here the menu navigation for you. Uh, you will see no change yet because you need to run the reset and full processes again. Uh, after any change, you need, you need to do that. And if you're lucky, the query will now show the address one and address two fields unmasked. If, no, if not, well, you know now what to do. Reboot your app server and clear the cache. And then it will work. You can also work the other way around for authorization. Currently, all users see the, the short description of the org location unmasked uh, but you can uh, define roles for which the users are not allowed to see those data but if you are trying to to add the field here the record field here uh, you won't succeed and that's because the org location desk short is not yet in the data privacy framework so first we add the record fields to our uh, data privacy framework uh, data set and then uh, we don't need to check any boxes here it's just it needs to be here uh, to be able to be used in the authorization roles so now you can choose the role and uh, deauthorize. You set the access code to not authorized your arc location desk or short. And, and now that field should be masked for all users having that role. Uh, if it still stays unmasked for those users, even after a successful data sync run, uh, and that means first a reset sync and then a full sync, and it doesn't work again you know the drill now you should reboot your app server and clear the cache so the last part of my presentation is about excluded fields uh, some fields are just 
uh, uh, well, too um, complicated to do data security on uh, in your queries. Uh, they are uh, used so many times in your criteria or sorting or whatever you want. You might want to exclude them from the process at all. And uh, you can do that by uh, putting them on the uh, exclude fields page, which is a page in the run data sync component. So the, the component where you start your uh, data sync process has an extra page called exclude fields, and then you can uh, put your fields there. It's not a record field, it's, it's actually a field. So uh, that field all, across all records in which it occurs, uh, uh, will always be unmasked and can always be used in criteria and ordering without running into the risk that you your user won't see any output from the query. Uh, we also have a query masking utility, which is a kind of a reporting component. Uh, it's a quick overview which fields are masked and which fields are unmasked for uh, uh, which user IDs. So you can uh, drill down to the user level to see which fields, which record fields are unmasked or masked for that specific user. You can either enter a user here or maybe several users and then run your report and then you get all records and fields or you can say well I put a record in here or maybe just a record in a field or a combination of records and fields and run the report and then you can see for all users uh, how they see that record and that field. I also create a, a physio chart, flowchart uh, for you. Uh, that is because sometimes when you are testing this functionality, uh, uh, you won't understand. You might not understand why is this field masked? Why do I don't? Why don't I see anything? Uh, why do I see it masked? Uh, I would expect it to be unmasked. And um, well, based on all these. Uh, choices, uh, it will determine, this is how PeopleSoft determines if it needs to show output or not, and for the field if it needs to show it masked or to show it unmasked. Uh, I won't uh, dive into the details of this flowchart, but if you download the presentation later, you, you can keep it uh, as a handy reference when you are uh, configuring, testing, and validating your configuration. So, finally, some attention points, limitations, and challenges. Challenges. The requirements are People Tools 85802, and uh, for Campus Solutions, it's PAM Image 23. But there are uh, also its enterprise components, uh, so it's also available in HCM and FSCM, etc. Now, maybe you uh, would have the question, uh, can we use the data masking profile? Well, that, that one was uh, designed and built, developed for the page and field configurator. And uh, uh, no, query data masking doesn't use data masking profiles. So the whole field is always masked. You can't say, you, you cannot say, uh, let's show the first three characters or whatever. Um, back to the question, how do we let different records sharing the same sub-record uh, to behave differently? Uh, well, you can. You need to create an authorization exception for that, like we did for the uh, address 1 and 2 in the org location. Uh, that one is not keyed by sub-record. It's for each record, it's different, but you must then use a universal role a role that everyone has. You always have some role that every user has. Well, just use that one, that one and then you can overwrite that sub-record restrictions. <clears throat> if you apply the authorization exception to that role, then you're good to go. 
Um, well, we already saw uh, the query output doesn't always change after uh, changing your configuration and running the sync. Um, sometimes if you're testing, it's a pain in the ass, but well, in, in production, this really should be no problem. But one uh, warning, you must design and validate your uh, query data masking configuration very, very well before you put it into production. What you really don't want is in production to have to change your configuration and then say, oh, all users need to exit from the application because we need to reboot our app server and clear the cache. You want to keep that to, well, regular uh, maintenance releases. Uh, uh, so before you put your configuration of QDM in production, make sure it's very well tested and validated. It works.